Oh, this WWE pay-per-view. Very good wrestling show, but a uh, disaster in some ways. Roman Reigns is out with COVID. He was removed from the show. Brock Lesnar was moved to the WWE Championship match. He won the title in the main event. And uh, I guess Drew McIntyre, actually, also. Uh, maybe out of action for a while. A lot of stuff happened on this show. Yeah, and Rich Holland broke his nose. And Rich Holland broke his nose. Yeah. So, okay, so for, for Drew, I don't know a lot of details about the McIntyre thing. I'll probably know more in the morning, but um, I guess he's been bothered by neck problems, which is saying something because he worked two matches every night last week. You know, he was working tag title matches with the Usos and then a street fight with Sheamus on, on every show. And he was also the Iron Man, although that doesn't mean as much. I mean, it. you know, he had more matches this year than anyone. And, the, you know... Not coincidentally, more often than not, the guy who wins the Iron Man. Now, granted, there's a lot less matches. Usually, that means like 180 or 210, 230 matches a year, and this is you know under 100. So it's not like in past years. But also, every match, for the most part, you know, I mean, there were there were there were house show matches, but not a lot of them. But most of the matches are TV, and guys work a lot harder on TV and pay per view matches and everything like that. But most of the time, you know, the person who wins the Iron Man match, um, it's like or Iron Man, the, who has the most matches in a year, um, generally speaking, will get a serious injury the next year. And it actually makes sense if you think about it. Um, you know, it doesn't always happen, but it's it. I've noticed it happening, you know, almost regularly. So, yeah, um, I don't know the seriousness of it. Hopefully it isn't too bad. They did. They did an angle on the show where uh, Cor Baron Corbin and uh, Happy Corbin and Madcap Moss took him out and pilmanized his neck. And as soon as I saw that, it's like, oh, this is an injury angle, and he's going to be out. It's like Lesnar's out of the <clears throat> Lesnar's in theory on Raw, not SmackDown as the champion. So I'm I'm presuming Lesnar and Roman Reigns are going to end up back together again by WrestleMania. I don't know that. But, you know, up until then, it was pretty clear that they were grooming McIntyre for that spot, um, you know, maybe before and maybe after as well, you know, because Lesnar's not going to be around forever. And, you know, if he's out for any, if, he, if it's a short period of time, they can make do. If it's a long period of time, um, man, you know, they got... They got to switch somebody or something. You know, they got to come up with a, they got to come up with some contenders for Roman Reigns. Um, so yeah, that's a another issue. Um, so with Lesnar, you know, having won the title, uh, the next step is Lesnar Lashley. You could tell at the end of the show they teased, you know, that glare with Lashley and everything like that, and that was the last scene. So and the match was booked specifically um, to, you know, like. For that direction, in the sense that Biggie was the one who was pinned, you know, because if Biggie wasn't pinned, obviously you'd want to go with Lesnar and Biggie. But the decision, for whatever whatever reason, you know, and they they the reason is is that the people who were making the decision felt it was a more marketable match, went with Lesnar and um, Lashley, and during the match, if you remember, Lesnar f fived f fived everyone, but he never f fived Lashley. And they set up a couple of spots, which was the uh, Lashley spear through the barricade. There was the um, uh, Lashley spear in the ring, although Lesnar did kick out of that spear. And then there was the hurt lock, which Lesnar was trapped in the hurt lock with the idea that Lashley proved he could get him in there and probably beat him. But Big East made the save there. So they booked spots all to be dominant by all the spots where the Lashley and Lesnar were booked for Lashley to look good. While Lesnar pulverized everybody else and destroyed everybody else, he was F5-ing people, German suplexing people left and right in that title match. And um, so that's that's the story of where they're going. And, you know, I presume they're going to get back to Reigns. Um, you know, as far as how and why and whatever, I don't know. I mean, the, you know, when you go to Mania... I mean, the thing with Mania is, is that they, they got those two titles, so they want one title defended on Saturday, one title defended on Sunday. So if they do Reigns and Lesnar, uh, they're going to have to get the title off one of them, one of those two. Um, 
if they're going to do the match, or else both would be on probably the Sunday show, and then you'd have the Saturday show with no title match, which is, I mean, it's not the end of the world. Nothing is. I mean, they every, all their money's guaranteed, so there's no big issue, but you'd still want, you know, that. And obviously, you know, everything changed today when, uh, when Reigns wasn't on the show, and because of that, you know, they... Uh, Vince made the call to, you know, not only put Lesnar in the match, but have Lesnar win the championship, give people, you know, something big, you know, a title change because they weren't getting Roman Reigns, the big star on the show. So, um, you know, where this all goes, I guess we have to uh, wait and see, you know, as far as long term. And as noted, Ridge Holland in the uh, pre-show match, uh, Ricochet did an assisted 450 and landed right on his face and shattered his nose. There was blood everywhere. They were desperately trying to get this blood stopped. And apparently it was gruesome uh, live. You didn't see a lot of this on television. And uh, luckily only a broken nose, it appears. Yeah. his. So it looks like his foot landed on the cheek. And then, like, in falling, like, his knee may have smashed his nose. Is that what you, you see the clip? I saw the clip, and uh, yeah, it was a foot and then a knee. Yeah, but the foot didn't hit the nose. The knee hit the nose. The foot hit the jaw. Like, when he landed, um, you know, in live time, when I watched it in live time, I thought he broke his jaw, you know, because of the the thing. But then the, later the announcer said it was a broken nose. It was weird because obviously Sheamus and Ridge Holland were supposed to win that match. And I guess, you know, I mean, um, you know, so you had Sheamus against two guys you know, Cesaro and Ricochet. And he just pins Cesaro clean with a bro kick after taking out Ricochet with a, a white noise on the floor. So it's just like, boy, did that, I mean, it's just, I mean, it was the plan, but it's just like when it's one heel against two baby faces and the heel takes out both. I know Roman Reigns did that with uh, Edge and Daniel Bryan. Um, but, you know, as a psych- psychology rule, Boy, did that make Cesaro and Ricochet look bad. You know, worse than, I mean, you you know, you, could, you can do, you can improvise things. Because, I mean, it was essentially a handicap match. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.